Hello everyone, this is Tom Fox, and I'd like to welcome you to episode 275 of the FCPA Compliance and Ethics Report. The FCPA Compliance and Ethics Report is sponsored by the Red Flag Group. The Red Flag Group is a business advisory, information services, and technological firm that helps clients manage risk across four key risk areas. These four key risk areas include sales and sales channels, including distributors, resellers, partners, suppliers, customers, human capital, which of course includes employees and contractors. You can find out more information on the Red Flag Group at www.redflaggroup.com. In today's episode, I take a look at the Key Energy FCPA Enforcement Action, which was recently concluded by the Securities and Exchange Commission. The key energy enforcement action has several very interesting and important aspects for the FCPA compliance practitioner. Number one, the um, enforcement action allows you to take a look at your compliance program in the context of a recent legal enforcement action and see what you may or may not be doing correctly. But more importantly, if you find or your company finds itself in an FCPA investigation, the key energy enforcement action uh, gives you some specific guidance on what you can do to obtain, a, frankly, a very favorable and positive result going forward. I found this enforcement action to be quite interesting, and I think you will too. I hope you will uh, join me, and thank you very much for listening to this episode of the FCPA Compliance and Ethics Report. The key energy enforcement action centered around the company's conduct in its Mexican subsidiary, or Key Energy Mexico, as I'll refer to it throughout the podcast. The uh, underlying facts were that the subsidiary paid out bribes or made illegal payments to employees at Pemex to induce Pemex, uh, a Pemex uh, purchasing agent, to provide inside information to Key Energy, as well as advice and assistance on contracts that Key Energy was bidding for uh, with Pemex. Uh, the contracts, there were not a series of contracts, but most interestingly, there was one base contract, and then there were addendums or additions added, which were called amplifications to those contracts. So that's really point one, that you need to consider not just new contracts or even renewals of existing contracts, but additions to existing contracts or amplifications as pointed out here. The corruption scheme was through a consulting firm and there were uh, relatively small payments. There were four payments of $6,400 made and this led to the amplifications that I previously mentioned which uh, increased the value of the contracts by $60 million. The uh, consulting firm was hired in 2010. The firm, consulting firm was not subjected to the company's requirement for due diligence. The Mexico country manager never disclosed to the corporate home office in Houston that the consulting firm had ties to the Pemex employee or that payments to the consulting firm were used to funnel bribes to Pemex employees for their assistance. The uh, key Mexico country manager clearly attempted to keep this information from the home office, but this does not absolve key energy or the home office from responsibility. At some point, key energy legal department in Houston became aware of the relationship, yet they allowed it to continue and indeed flourish. All of the consulting arrangements with the key uh, energy, excuse me, with the consulting firm violated legal policies and legal procedures because they were entered without pre-approval from the legal department. No due diligence was conducted on the consulting firm. And there was uh, a uh, payments were actually made before uh, any written agreements were entered into. The um, key energy Mexico country manager uh, made after the consulting firm uh, was brought on, made uh, payments of approximately $561,000 over a four year period. And these were made to um, 
the consulting firm, which funneled the money to the PMEX officials. The previously mentioned four payments of $6,400 were actually paid by the from the personal bank account of the country manager directly wired into the personal bank account of the PMEX official. So they even had, uh, a rather amazingly enough, direct payments by the country manager to the official in action. Uh, these facts obviously are very, very bad and um, led to a serious problem for Key Energy. Yet Key Energy's action through the investigation period really helped them obtain the result they did, the result they sustained, which was a $5 million uh, fine in the face of having uh, profits of over uh, $90 million from their uh, FCPA violations. The, As I indicated, even though there was no written agreement between Key Energy Mexico and the consulting firm, the payments were made through uh, this uh, mechanism. And it was pretty clear that Key Energy was not actually engaging in uh, doing compliance. Um, the corporate offices in Houston failed in the basic oversight of Key Mexico around compliance and did not monitor compliance in Mexico to ensure that the subsidiary complied with and enforced anti corruption policies and procedures, kept accurate records concerning payments to consultants and gifts to Mexican uh, government officials, of which we'll talk about more in a minute. Additionally, there was no oversight and monitoring by the compliance internal audit function of the company uh, who could enforce any of the company's existing anti-corruption compliance programs or even clean up the mess with some uh, remedial actions. But now let me turn to another very interesting point in the key energy case, and that is around the issues of uh, gifts. And here, Key Energy made gifts in the forms of donations for PMEX's annual uh, Christmas season celebration raffle. And they made these donations, a uh, donation in 2012 of $118,000 with the understanding that uh, gifts were be purchased which were uh, intended to be raffled off to uh, PMEX employees. However, it turned out some $55,000 of this was designated as specific gifts for 130 PMEX officials, not general donations for the benefits of all PMEX employees. The amount that was spent was nine times greater than the amount donated for the Christmas raffle for PMEX employees in 20, the previous year, 2010, and or two years previous, and then 26 times the amount spent in 2011 for the same event. Um, interestingly, the SEC order pointed out that Key Energy, the corporate office, failed to consider the implications of the explanations by Mexico's country manager that the higher gift amount in 2012 correlated to Pemex Mexico having done greater business with uh, Pemex. You would think that this would... Uh, at least raise a red flag that uh, additional investigations were needed. Nevertheless, this uh, gift was really not only interesting but important because it was the first time the SEC in an order talked about transaction monitoring. And here they specifically pointed out with the uh, spend from the two prior years of uh, 110 times the amount and 126 times the amount, Really, this is the time that transaction monitoring should occur. And if a company has an anomalous situation where your gift spend at Christmas jumps that much, you really should take a look at the sales from the same time period. So this was uh, something we had not seen from the SEC before, and this transaction uh, monitoring analysis laid out by the SEC in the order clearly shows that the SEC will be expecting this going forward. This means for any compliance practitioner, you will need visibility not only into uh, gifts, travel, and entertainment, and donation spends in high-risk areas, but also sales information so that they can be correlated and reviewed from the compliance perspective. This has been talked about by the Department of Justice. Nevertheless, this is the first time we've seen it in an SEC order. 
Uh, now let's take a look at what Key Energy did and how they got really their excellent results from their FCPA investigative and enforcement action journey. The company received a declination to prosecute from the Department of Justice and a $5 million penalty from the SEC. The company itself remediated so thoroughly that it was not required to have a monitor going forward, so I really felt like by all means the key energy enforcement action should be studied by compliance professionals to determine how the company itself obtained these positive results. It is incumbent to note that the result was achieved that even though key energy did not self-disclose to the Department of Justice or the Securities and Exchange Commission. The, the SEC order itself noted that in January 2014, the SEC contacted Key Energy with respect to potential FCPA violations. Later in April of 2014, Key Mexico employees, Key Energy Mexico employees, reported to the corporate home office that they believe the recently resigned country manager had promised to pay bribes to one or more Pemex employees during his employment with Key Energy Mexico. At that point, Key Energy reported these allegations to the Securities and Exchange Commission, and the company undertook a broad internal investigation and risk assessment of its own internal operations. However, from that point forward, it appears the cooperation afforded by Key Energy to the SEC was exemplary. The order stated that to the extent the internal investigation identified additional issues of concern, Key Energy provided updates to the commission staff. They translated documents to the uh, and made them available to the SEC. Obviously, shout out to Mr. Translations himself, Jay Rosen, there, and provided overall cooperation, which assisted the staff of in its investigation. But more than this cooperation with the investigation phase, Key Energy engaged in extensive remediation to its compliance program after it was notified by the SEC. Initially, the company hired a new chief compliance officer who led the effort to make significant remedial measures. The company also uh, engaged in the following, which I would suggest that you study at some length and benchmark against your problem, uh, excuse me, your compliance program. Number one, uh, Key Energy suspended all payments to vendors and third parties in Mexico shortly after the investigation re uh, and review began. Uh, the company engaged in a manual review of over 600 vendors in Mexico for the purposes of clearing legitimate payments and assessing whether to move forward with those vendors in current and future operations. The company also reviewed all vendors in use by Key Energy in Russia and Colombia and instituted enhanced due diligence procedures for all vendors globally. The company established enhanced financial controls around procedures to pay processes in Mexico, Colombia, and Russia, including interim employee certification requirements, revised onboard vendor requirements, and heightened payment approval requirements. The company implemented a new business opportunities protocol to help Key Energy Legal better understand the business risks, including the role played by agents, consultants, or other vendors and business partners so as to enable better assessment of corruption-related risk and future business opportunities. The company installed new controllers in Colombia and Mexico business units and more effectively enforced a solid reporting line relationship to the U.S. controller and ultimately to the chief financial officer. There were in-person visits, visits by the international uh, excuse me, to the international locations of Key Energy by the chief compliance officers to conduct training, of all international employees. There was the development and reviewing of several compliance policies and procedures, including the Code of Business Conduct, FCPA and anti-corruption policy, the travel expense policy, and new hire screening forms. And finally, and most interestingly, there was a complete wind down and exit of all markets outside the United outside of the United States and Canada and a commitment to exit Mexico by the end of 2016. Generally, these initiatives describe either investigatory efforts, creation and enhancement of internal control efforts, initiatives to speak to appropriate business personnel to the effect of doing compliance, uh, putting in training person and having a CCO who gets out of the corporate office and visits the employees, relates to updating and upgrading. Hallmark II, an effective compliance program as set out by the FCPA guidance, including a code of conduct, written policies and procedures, and finally, the last uh, commitment, which was leaving all markets outside of North America and specifically exiting Mexico, shows that 
uh, why a company should have an effective compliance program, and that's probably the biggest uh, thing or takeaway you should have. Because if you can't, if you don't have an effective compliance program, you would want to, you will have to exit high risk areas if if you can't do business there uh, in compliance. There's one other noteworthy component to the resolution and the disgorgement. There's no other financial p- penalty listed. Uh, One must assume that this is based on the company's cooperation and remediation and, finally, its financial condition. Because in one paragraph of the SEC order, it reads, in determining to accept the offer, the SEC considered the cooperation key energy afforded to the commission staff and remedial actions taken by key energy. In addition, in determining the disgorgement amount and not to impose a penalty, The Commission has considered Key Energy's current financial condition and its ability to maintain necessary cash reserves to fund its operation and to meet its liabilities. In addition to all that, the order specified that the company would take uh, a position uh, and indeed all reasonable efforts to obtain authorization from a bankruptcy court should it have to file bankruptcy. Uh, over the uh, respondent's uh, obligation to pay this disgorgement amount. Uh, obviously, the SEC has no interest in putting a company out of business, um, and this order really recognizes the business reality and the current state of the energy industry, uh, corporate debt and obligations, uh, and debt to corporate obligations. So uh, I found this uh, something that uh, was very interesting as well. So those are some of the highlights from the key energy FCPA enforcement uh, action. Uh, if you would go to my website, www.fcpacompliancereport.com, I've got a white paper on this uh, enforcement action, which is available for your download for free. I'll also link to the uh, SEC enforcement action in the show notes. I hope uh, that you will take a look at it, and I hope you will study this matter because it's, uh, I think, very uh, useful and important. This is Tom Fox. I'd like to thank you for listening to this episode of the FCPA Compliance and Ethics Report. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox again. I'd like to thank you for listening to this episode of the FCPA Compliance and Ethics Report. I have two calls to actions for you. The first is if you listen to this podcast on iTunes, I would greatly appreciate it if you would uh, rate this podcast. The second is I'm developing my next mailbag episode. So if you have any questions, please shoot me an email at tfox at tfoxlaw.com. This is Tom Fox. Thank you very much for listening to this episode of the FCPA Compliance and Ethics Report.